Okay, hi there, this is Kim Willis, and uh, this is a presentation. Well, actually, it's, it's, a, it's really a training. It is a training. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got nothing to sell you today. I will, uh, I will mention towards the end something special that I've got coming up uh, that you may want to find out to, you know, get more information on. But, uh, and, and it's really special, I mean, transformational. If, if you're ready to move on to the fast track, I think you'll love it. But um, today is primarily a training. And the topic is 204 leads from four social media posts. Now, this is a recording of a live event I did a few days ago. Um, problem, issue, and uh, we couldn't overcome it uh, for the first part. Okay, so it'll be, so this is the kind of the recording that I had to do for the first section. I had to redo it, the first section of the live show, uh, but the second section is uh, is a replay of the live. Now, the replay has got a few rough edges uh, to it, but I think you'll find the content is very good. Indeed, the people who were on the live show uh, gave it a big, big thumbs up. All right, let's get started. 204 leads from four social media posts. So, Look, there's lots of different ways to uh, generate, uh, to make sales, generate leads, find new customers and clients, etc. Um, not all of those methods involve the use of social media. It could be, uh, well, I don't know how much you've been investigating this, this topic, but when I first started, I, I started using Google Ads and then I supplemented with uh, uh, Google. I set, set, set up a blog and within a month or so, I started to get traffic to the blog. I was targeting specific, uh, specific keywords. Uh, then I did email marketing, really good at email marketing. I think I saw that. Um, I'm a bit of a veteran. I got started in 2006, and so that's you know, a fair while ago, 16 years, as I record this. And uh, over that period, I, I've, it hasn't always been plain sailing, I've got to tell you that. Uh, it never is. There's, uh, there, sometimes there are ups and downs. I mean, we had COVID, and that knocked me. Um, I didn't get COVID back in 2020, but... Uh, there was a lot of fear and trepidation at that time, so I did very little business in the first six months of 2020. Then it started to pick up towards the end, and then I bounced uh, into 2021, a very strong uh, first uh, uh, six months. So, um, but I, overall, yeah, I've, I've done great. I mean, I've sold millions of dollars worth of products and services, multi million dollars worth of products and services that I've got nothing to complain about. Um, and, you know, one of my missions, one of, one of the main reasons why I keep doing this is to help people, um, you know, get off to a good start or if they've been dabbling with this online thing for several years and haven't really made money or get to that first level, right? Or the second or the third. Well, it depends on where they are now. I mean, if you've made your first fifty thousand uh, dollars online, great. Let's see if we can help you get to the to the next hundred, you know, to the hundred thousand threshold. Or if, if you've already made a hundred thousand, one hundred and fifty thousand, okay, well, let's shoot for a million cumulative. Okay, so this is for stayers, not players. Okay, so we build it up over time. All right, let's. Uh, okay, so um, so what I'm saying is that let's if you haven't yet made your first hundred thousand, well, let's let's focus on that. Okay. If you've made your first hundred thousand, just a bit over or whatever, okay, let's focus focus on the next one hundred thousand, something like that, and then a longer term might be a million. Now, turn if you want to turn your social media posts or accounts, sorry, into cash cows. Uh, the primary platforms that I use are sixteen, and uh, more recently uh, LinkedIn. I got my acquired my first clients from LinkedIn in May of last year. Got another one the month after, and then a string of uh, clients uh, came on board with me. Uh, from there, okay. So I've got uh, different methods. Uh, I use a different method for LinkedIn. Uh, well, back uh, last year was a different method. I've I wanted to get off to a quick start, so I didn't rely so much on posting content. That wasn't a big issue for me. Good from a credibility building point of view and authority building point of view, but the content didn't generate any leads. So I'm just going to come clean with you on that. I didn't generate any leads from the content on LinkedIn, but I generated leads from direct outreach, a lot of leads, okay? Back to Facebook, I generate leads from both. I generate leads from my content every time, virtually every time. It's almost foolproof now. I, um, 
I get leads from one of my special lead gen posts. Now, I'm not posting that sort of content every day. I'm not. At the moment, I'm not because uh, I, I don't need to. I generated hundreds of leads from the last few posts that uh, I published on, on Facebook, and I'm happy with that. Okay? So you can turn it on, you can turn it off like a tap, like a faucet. Uh, all right, and and then also when I'm chatting with people on uh, Messenger, um, you know, I'll, I'll generate a few leads here and there as well. So it's all good. It's fantastic. I think social media, as much as I resisted it in the in um, you know before 2016, it's one of the greatest step forwards that I've taken. Okay, even though I'd, I'd made a lot of money using these other off uh, online methods before 2000. 2016, before social media, before I started using social media properly, um, social media has taken things to another level. It's unbelievable. So if you've got any any uh, doubts or questions about the viability of social media, and I'm not talking about Facebook ads or anything like that. I'm talking about the free methods. If you've got any doubts, please dispel them as quickly as you can, and I hope I'll help uh, help you do that if that's what is required. Okay. Now I get it. I know what you've been going through. The sort of people that watch a training like this are people who are generally struggling. You know, they've they haven't. They, maybe they've made some money, but they're not happy about that. Um, they think they should have made a lot more. Um, maybe that you know, maybe like I said at the beginning, they just want to get to that next level. I'm not quite sure how to do. It. They prove that they could make it, right. And um, and the other type of person is someone who is already very successful and probably just having a bit of a sticky beak. They're curious. All right. Okay. Well, they'll normally be in the in the minority. So I'm really pitching, you know, pitching this message, giving this training for those people who have not reached their full potential on the social platforms. So look, I may know what you've been going through. Maybe you struggled with social media. You're not completely comfortable with it. I know it's an issue with lots of marketers, coaches, and experts because they never made the shift. Not that that's the only issue clearly it's not but seeing as most people are not making life-changing money on the big social platforms let's deal with a few of those issues now because if you can fix it over the next few months your life will be a whole lot better a life transformed the first social media and me this is my tale of woe my sob, sob story but don't cry for me because things things got better in the end it had a happy ending but uh yeah, for the next minute or two, be warned, it's ugly. I tried to make money on Facebook for more than seven years. Yeah, I didn't, didn't create a Facebook account in 2016. I'm saying that's when I became successful. But I, I had a Facebook account for many, many years before 2016. But do you think I could make it work from a business perspective? Uh, how about no? From 2009 till 2016, I made one sale. Well, I guess it's better than no sale. but not good enough over seven years. Not good enough. No way. A Facebook friend uh, saw one of my mediocre posts because they were mediocre back then. Uh, they reached out. He reached out. And uh, we had a chat. So that's where I got that one customer from. Okay. Um, so no, I was grateful for that. But uh, And the next thing I know, he bought the, uh, I was an affiliate product because I, that's what I was doing back then. Uh, and uh, I was promoting that product at the time, and it was kind of a high ticket thing, and I made $2,000. Whoopee! I thought, wow, I've made 2000 Finally, I've made $2,000. Oh, I, I should be able to repeat that next week and the week after. Well, it didn't happen, folks. It did not happen. So that was in 2011, okay? So it was another five years after that. So I'd already, up until from 2009 to 2011, didn't make a single sale, right? two years drought. And I thought I'd properly broken the drought in 2011. Uh-uh, another five years of pain. That's a fact. So that sale that I made, it was a fluke because I didn't make another sale in 2000, until 2016 when I finally had a big breakthrough with Facebook. I don't know about you, but I don't like flukes. I want predictability and a high degree of certainty. I want to know that if I do X, Y, Z, or Z of the American, uh, sorry, the Americans say Z, don't they? Um, if I do X, uh, that if I do X, Y, and Z, or Z, the money will follow. Not that it was a big issue. I was making plenty of money using other methods, but this social media thing did my head in. 
really did. How is it that some folks are making money on Facebook and I can't, was my forlorn cry. Here is why. I wasn't committed. I was uncomfortable with being social all the time. But I love talking to people, but I'm not really a social person. And I think there's a lot of people out there have this kind of hang up about it. Okay, so in the end, I just had to make a decision that I was just going to ignore my hang up and just move forward regardless. Number three, I had no idea how to write or create content uh, for social media. I didn't know what to do with just post or just post happy snaps or whatever, uh, the occasional business post. And I didn't know how to write. Okay, I got that one sale as a fluke. That was a business post that this guy saw. But looking back now, it's kind of shameful what I did. I just didn't have a clue how to write for social. Number four, if I got a lead, I wasn't clear on how to convert it into a sale. Getting a lead is one thing, but making a sale, well, that's something else altogether. So do any of these points ring a bell for you? Well, if they do, oh, great. Keep watching. You're going to love this. Now, to be clear, I don't want you to take seven years before the penny drops and you're finally making sales. Uh, by the way, there's an example of people that I've helped in the past. This is a, a lady in uh, Florida, and um, she's given me a pretty quite a glowing uh, testimonial. Um, she would have given up if it wasn't for me. I uh, helped to um, kind of keep her spirits up during the early stages. And now um, she's got a very successful massage business or massage practice in Florida. And um, it's just booming. I mean, it really is booming. And she gets a lot of traffic now from the search engine. So, um, okay. Not much from social for her, but nevertheless, the right strategy for the right person, the right situation is what I'm all about. Okay? I'm not just about social because I've had vast experience. I can sort of talk to somebody for 15, 20 minutes, up to an hour, um, asking them questions, and then I'll have a pretty well figured out what they need to do. Okay, you've probably heard it before. Content is a big issue, no doubt about it. Getting it right is vital. A lot of people know that. So why do so many people struggle with it? Well, here are some reasons. You're not comfortable with writing and you're not confident with writing. Think about that. There's a lot of people out there that um, are definitely not confident, confident with writing content. So they make a big uh, compromise and just post rubbish, garbage content, right? Because they're not confident enough to write something serious from a business point of view, um, they don't think they're worthy of it. That's another reason. There's all sorts of blockages that we have. My, I, I, I didn't have a problem uh, in term, terms of uh, content because I was already creating content with my blog and all the rest of it. The only thing I didn't really, I wasn't really clear on was how to create content for social, but I could write. So I'm kind of one of the lucky ones. But um, I... Um, so I was confident from that perspective, but I had other issues. So anybody that's struggling with, say, social, social media, there's, there's going to be an issue. There may be two or three or four issues that need to be addressed, okay? So we need to identify them and figure out a way to sort it out, okay? And definitely with a lot of the people that I talk to, writing is an issue. And indeed, one of my best students, Connie Kachir, um, she... Um, she was terrible at writing and she didn't like writing, okay? She didn't like writing content. But because she had a burning desire to succeed, she took my advice. And that's all I ask of people, take my advice. So I worked with her uh, intensively for the first few months and then, you know, uh, scaled it back after that. But um, she became a pretty good writer. I mean, not, not, a professional, not at the professional level, but it was good enough. You don't have to be as good as me, right? You can, you can cut through with words by using other techniques, and these are techniques that I teach people. Um, so, and she went on to uh, attract 121 clients through, just from Facebook alone, no advertising. But you, she used a combination of the content and uh, the posts, in other words, and the um, and, uh, messenger, right? We use this unique way of, um, you know, generating leads using messenger as well as content and um, then converting them into sales and it's it's conversational it's not salesy it's not uh, aggressive 
a little bit assertive at times, but generally it's a very sweet process and um, it's very rare that somebody will block me because you know, when I use these sorts of methods, okay? And uh, the other reason is you don't realise that your future success hinges on your ability to write content that, and that establishes you as an authority in your niche, in your space, whatever you want to call it, okay? You've got to have a little bit of authority. It's not just no, it's not no and like, it's no like and trust, right? Trust. And part of building, key part of building trust is authority so that people look up to you. And when that happens, they're much more likely to take notice of you when you, uh, you know, make a recommendation or something like that. Uh, generates leads whenever you want. This is the sort of content that you should be posting. And sets the scene for easy conversations with people who are fantasizing about doing business with you. That's where we're heading, folks. That's where I want you to head. Okay? Um, stop doing it tough. Do it properly. Uh, acquire the skills and then everything starts to fall into place. It's a beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Now, ooh, what happened there? Now, before I continue, I want to add one key point. As important as content is, to succeed with social media, you need to also have an engaged audience, no matter how small it might be. So if you just have five to ten people who like what you do and will support you by engaging with your content, you're well on the way. And that's more about the sort of uh, person you need to be uh, in order to succeed. Okay. Um, so until you can make some kind of a mental shift, um, towards in the direction of uh, where we're heading here, um, you're going to continue to struggle. Uh, perhaps you can just get to the point like me in 2016. I just said to myself, "The hell with this! To heck with this! I'm not going to put up with this nonsense anymore. I'm sick of it. I'm as mad as heck, and I'm not going to take it anymore." I'm borrowing that from that uh, movie called uh, Network, I think, uh, with um, Peter, an Australian actor. But um, yeah. So you have to, sometimes you just have to get a bit annoyed with yourself, right? I found that often I have my best uh, leaps forward, if you like, um, when I get frustrated with myself. I'm not going to blame the platform. I'm not going to blame any, like, it's like people who uh, say, oh, Facebook's not working. I'll try LinkedIn when they see one of my LinkedIn, uh, you know, uh, updates on, uh, that I put on uh, Facebook. And then they reach out and they say, oh, uh, yeah, I think I'll do. I think I want to do this LinkedIn. Seems like it's much better. I said, have you made any money from Facebook? No. Nope. Well, you know, I've made heaps of money from Facebook. I'm only doing LinkedIn because it's another platform with a different audience. That's why I'm doing it. I'm not abandoning Facebook. Maybe you need to make some money from Facebook first, and that'll give you the confidence confidence to uh, do well on LinkedIn. Then again, maybe your business is a better fit for LinkedIn. Sometimes that that is the case, and it's the the right thing to do to move to LinkedIn. You just you need to, you know, if you want to sort of get clarity about that, just talk to me, and I'll I'll give you some free uh, free tips or free advice. So if you've got just five to ten people who like what you do and will support you by engaging with your content, you're well on the way. You're well on the way to social media success in the early stages. In fact, Facebook group that I started, not not the one that you're familiar with, but an, another one that's now dormant, but um, for a pretty good reason. But um, the way I got that group going was to enlist the support of half a dozen people that were kind of like me and, you know, we had good rapport and all the rest of that. And uh, I sort of enrolled them in the vision for the group. And, um, and so the idea was that we'd each support each other's content, uh, content in the group. We'd do it by commenting and all the rest of it. And that worked extremely well. And then... They could see what was happening. Other people heard about it. And uh, we grew to like a 1,000 members in five or six weeks. It grew pretty quickly. So, um, so if, you want to get, um, if you want to accelerate your engagement and you don't have a lot of friends or connections, just see if you can find a few people, two or three or four people like that, and, and sort of um, do a, a quid, quid pro quo, um, invite them, tell them that, look, you'll support their content, you support. You know, they'll support yours. If they support yours, everybody's happy, right? And uh, that, that can work, work quite well. So uh, there's a little uh, tip or another tip. All right, moving on. Now, 
back to back to the content issue. What is a real problem here? Just before I continue, uh, this is the first training that I've done. Um, it's not kind of the live training that I've done for oh goodness, it'll be well over a year. So I'm just sort of getting the feel of it. So just uh, bear with me, okay? Uh, so what's the, the content issue? What is the real problem here? Well, I think some people just don't want to put in the grunt work to nail it once and for all. That's why they they sometimes flip from one shiny object, make money making scheme to another, to another, to another. Um, they live in this fantasy world that says to them, oh. I make money by joining programs because somehow, somehow money is going to rain from the sky uh, because I'm joining, uh, you know, I'm joining a, I, I've paid you know, $1,000 or 5000 or whatever it is to join uh, this program and all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> riches will, will be mine. But um, they don't, an extraordinary number of people that I've noticed just do not want to put in the grunt work, you know, to nail it once and for all. So um, I know that there's nobody in this little uh, audience tonight here in that category but i just mention it so you happily post animal and family uh, pictures or they post jim rowan anthony robbins quotes brendan burchard you know quotes they think that somehow this is how you do uh, social media and uh, they write about warm and fuzzy topics that don't have a snowflake's chance in hell of moving the reader towards taking action in their favor or in your favor is applicable to you okay so none of this stuff works it might work from an engagement point of view, which is okay when you, you, you know, in the, in the first month. But after then, after that first month, all you've got is a social club. You know, you don't have a business because, number one, the wrong people are probably commenting on the social posts and cat videos and all the rest of it. And um, even if it was the right people, you're not giving them what they really need and they want solutions to their problems. That's what they need. Okay. How I generated 204 leads from four Facebook posts. I've given you some things already, but let's go a bit deeper. I understood my audience. So this is what I did uh, in that month, uh, like um, start like halfway between February and halfway between February and half uh, of March, 15th of March or thereabouts. I understood my audience. I knew what they wanted. And I gave them what they wanted. Isn't that the, the classic and perfect formula? For marketing, we've got to understand our audience. So that's understanding the avatar. What is it that makes them tick? What keeps them awake at night? Um, even if it doesn't keep them awake at night, do you know something that they don't know? Do you know about a problem that they're probably not even aware of? Because, um, I mean, Shirley is, is really, uh, really good on this. Um, we've got the uh, sort of the obvious problem, the visible problem, the stated problem, but peel back the layers and there's bound to be another problem. Now, they may or may not be aware about that other problem, but it's your job to find out what it is, to know what it is, because you know your niche. You understand your niche, and you understand what the real problems are. And I can tell you that kudos and dollars flow to those people who have got so much insight about their audience that they can state those problems, and the audience is thinking to themselves, oh, wow, I've never, I've never heard anyone say that. I've never read anything like that before. It's like it's like she's talking directly to me. You get it? So that's kind of high level marketing. Few people ever get there, but um, but with uh, some good guidance, etc., um, you might be surprised how quickly it can happen. Yeah, providing you're diligent and all the rest of it, it certainly happened within about ninety days. High level, high level, right? Um, because anyway, we'll. we'll I'll keep going. I just love this topic. It's so exciting. Did I, so did I give people what they needed? Well, not always because we've got um, – uh, sometimes I do with content, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I, I'm more about the honey rather than the medicine, okay, because the medicine can come later. Um, sometimes I give them a mixture between the honey and the medicine, so I, I mix it up into a content group, content mix, okay? Um, but I don't just want to give people what they need all the time because – that might be a bit unpalatable, and I don't have enough mental leverage with those people at this point. Maybe they're just new Facebook friends. They don't know me from a bar of soap, right? And uh, so if I just come out giving them the medicine straight off the bat, that you've got to do this and this and this and this, um, they're going to freak out. Now, tonight, I'm giving you a little bit of honey, but I'm giving you more medicine tonight because I I'm just being straight about this uh, content 
this writing issue. Um, but I'm not, I'm not always talking like that with my posts, with my Facebook posts, right? So um, it's a matter of giving people what they need based on where they're at at any given point in time. All right. Now, something else is this. If you don't have a sense of urgency to make some changes, the next uh, 12 months, the next 12 months will likely be the same as the previous 12 months. I think that's, uh, that's pretty true, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And uh, like a hamster on a wheel, same old, same old. Round and round we go. That was me for seven years on Facebook. Round and round I went, right? Um, I'd, I'd try, I'd get excited about a new strategy, uh, Facebook strategy, and then I'd give it a go for three weeks and then I'd quit. And then I'd go back to what I was doing. I was making good money uh, anyway, but I was still frustrated. I couldn't make this Facebook thing work, right? And um, yeah, so it, 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 wasn't a, it wasn't a good experience, but... Um, I felt like the, the proverbial rat on a wheel or hamster on a wheel or whatever, round and round I was going. Okay, now project yourself forward five years, 2027. You want it to be better, at least financially speaking, than 2022. I know that. You wouldn't be here. We live in a volatile world. Anything can happen. Surely the time to take action is now. We've had, what have we had? We've had COVID. We've had um, an in, a big kick up in inflation particularly in the US, but uh, Australia's not that far behind. Uh, prices, oil, petrol, you know, gas, um, all sorts of things. Uh, more difficult for people in North America or, or even in uh, Europe because it's colder there, so they use more gas to heat their house, do not they? Um, so, look, there are all sorts of things that can happen. Uh, cold winds can start blowing again. Who knows what's going to happen in the future? I say let's, uh, you know, let's make our business profitable, viable. Uh, we can be like the squirrel that stores the nuts uh, in summer and autumn. Uh, we need to take action. That's, that's really my call to action for you today. Now, I'm saying with uh, the content side of things, I'm saying um, uh, at the minimum, well, not, not at the minimum, but in terms of writing, creating content, I'm not talking about posting it and answering comments and all the rest of it, but I'm just saying, uh, uh, writing content, you probably need two to three hours a week, right? If you do it my way. Because um, number one, you don't need to be posting business content every day of the week, right? Uh, you, need, um, you need two or three posts. One will be your kind of uh, bigger post and the other two would be like support posts. They're smaller. Might just be two paragraphs of text. So um, I can create that. I can create the bigger post myself in about an hour, and then the small posts, I can knock them up in about um, 10, 15 minutes. But that's me. I can I can write quick. So I'm saying for newbies, uh, it, it'll take a bit longer until you get good at it. So I'm saying three hours a week maximum. So it's not about, well, I hear these stories about people who are spending like three hours a day writing content. Three oh. hours a day, five, six days a week. What? Break. Um, so, um, and and when you look at the content they're writing, it's just not aligned with their audience. Not in any way aligned with their audience, right? So we got it. This is the area that makes the money, folks. This is where we make the money, or at least it's one of the big areas. The other one is direct, uh, you know, chatting with people and stuff like that. But um, we got to win this content game one word at a time. And if you start to get a little good at it, you'll start to like it and love it. What are your content objectives? Okay, so if we're talking about, you know, business-oriented content that is designed to generate a lead and establish you as an authority, that kind of thing, really important objectives. The first content type that I like to use is topic insights. Okay, topic insights. What's that about? Well, it's not just about highlighting problems. That's important too, but that might be a separate piece of content. It teaches customers something new about themselves or their business and prompts them to take action in your favour. Get that? It teaches them something new about themselves, something that um, they hadn't heard before. Or it teaches them something new about their business, if you're targeting business people or, you know, B2B, whatever, and prompts them to take action in your favour. Now, initially, the action might be just to... Give you a like 
they may be holding back a little bit from giving you an effusive uh, comment. They may not reach out to you on Messenger initially, okay? But they're starting to think now. And then uh, a few days later, they see another post from you. And once again, it just hits the spot for them. Telling you when it happens, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. All right. Now, when you share insights, the objective is to move people from mental state A to mental state B. Topic insight is not the same as thought leadership, which rarely causes customers to change their views or stimulate immediate action. That's what we're wanting them to do. Okay, so uh, as I said, the key to effective uh, topic insight is to uh, move people beyond presenting a new idea to undermining an existing one, an idea that they may hold uh, dear. And, and look, this can work. Um, they, they may absolutely believe this is the right way to do it. For instance, if you're in a home service business uh, like Hector is, there are probably some prevailing views that some people have when it comes to uh, you know, getting their house cleaned or whatever. So it's, it's our job or it's your job or whoever's doing it to kind of uh, reorient people's thinking. And uh, if you do it in a way that informs them that no one else is doing this in, you know, in your space, in, um, you'll have them. You'll win them over to your cause. The same if you're, in, uh, if you're selling, if you've got a service that you're selling to businesses, et cetera, you're a coach, whatever. Um, chances are with a bit of digging, um, a lot of thought, um, you'll come up with something that will work. And so that's the sort of content, insightful content we need to be creating. We're undermining existing views. We're challenging the orthodoxy, the prevailing orthodoxy, the status quo, okay? Now, topic insight is typically developed by combining things you already know with other information gleaned from third-party sources. That's how I do it, okay? So I, I, take, I say, okay, what do I know about this niche? What do I know about my perfect client, Okay. And uh, what don't I know? Do I need to do a little bit more research to find out what is what views and problems are prevalent for this particular micro niche? All right, well, then I'll do a little bit of the research, but that's, that's how I do it. Um, now, you know, you know content is working right when you get a spontaneous message from a new friend on, on Facebook. Hey, Kim, uh, thanks for your connection request, friend request, actually. I saw your content, great stuff. That alone is a reason to accept your request, right? So that's, that's sort of where we want to be heading. We need to be heading where you get people who say it to you spontaneously or um, when you're just having another, a chat about another topic on Messenger, uh, they bring it up. They, they bring it up and they say, hey, I really love the stuff that you're doing. It's really, it's, it's, it's great. It's really helped me a lot. You see, so when you start getting that kind of feedback, you know you're on the winning pathway. Okay, so that's number one type of post, insightful posts, insights. Okay? Number two is more about problem, identifying and illuminating problem. So you educate your prospect about two things, the problems you solve and why it's important to solve them. Everybody knows about, you know, marketers have to sort of, uh, you know, talk about problems and why you need to solve them or um, talk about problems that people are having. But we also need to become better at informing people about why they need to do it, why they need to solve this problem and why they need to take action now, not in a month, not in six months, but now. And, you know, sometimes we might remind them about the cold winds that, are, that may be coming down, you know, coming down the, the, the pipeline, the metaphorical pipeline there. Maybe there's also there's also the different ways we can do it, but we, we, we want to motivate people to take action now before it's too late. Sometimes the prospect thinks they have problem X, which is what I've talked about before, the problem beneath the problem, when in reality lurking beneath the surface is another problem, the real problem. We talked about that. So your job is to create insightful content and covers and uh, uncovers and focuses on real problems, not smoke screens. Okay, so that's number two problems. Highlighting problems. Number three is share your problem-solving process. This is one of the quickest ways to get prospects excited about the way you do things. Soon enough, they'll be fantasizing, or at least a percentage of them will be fantasizing about doing business with you. Okay, so that's your process. How you work with clients. Why not share it? Go public with it. You know how you solve problems with clients. Well, you don't have to go into all the, uh, you know, all of the uh, detail in, in great. Um, 
you know, the minutia, you, 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 um, you can sort of map out your process and create a post, create content around the process. Hey, this is how, broadly, how I solve, you know, uh, X problem for this type of client, you know, and you share your process. And then finally, you make them smile. Make your content a little bit entertaining if you can, right? So, sure, you might put in a few smiley faces and things like that. But you can also do it with the actual words that you use. You can brighten it up a bit. You can. So I often use slang words. I use the word gunner sometimes instead of going to, right? It, because it, I think it makes it a bit more, it connects better with the average person, right? So let's not forget the entertainment factor. And even if you're the strong, silent type, add spice to your content so that people feel good about doing business with you. They love your content and they like you. Okay. Now, anatomy of social media lead generation posts. Now, here's an example of one. Okay, this. Okay, this one. Uh, I ran this one a couple of years ago. Um, it might be a little bit hard to see, but I'll just read the, the first paragraph. Some say that organic is slow, so uh, organic uh, social methods are slow and time consuming. Slow? Question mark. I generated my first inbound leads in a week, and sales flowed a week later. Fast enough for you? All right, so what am I doing there? I'm opening with a problem. I give them quick relief in all in the same sentence, in the same paragraph. So I'm talking about slow and time consuming, you know, organic is slow, blah, blah. Um, and then I say slow, I generated my first inbound leads in a week. All right, so I'm giving them a little bit of quick relief. I'm giving them some, some hope, okay? And then, uh, I'm, then I move into more problems in the second and third uh, paragraph, I think it is. And then uh, as we get closer to it, I talk about a little bit about process, okay, um, in the form of a kind of an offer. Uh, I say, first up, I say, so the first step is to generate the lead. Let the content do the heavy lifting. My system then automatically sifts and sorts. We only talk to the best folks how good is that right so i'm giving them a little bit of insight into my process and then i come up with the number five point the offer um so i'm going to give you access to a video i put together for my students blah 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 and it's called nine content archetypes okay so there's the offer there and um just a few other bits and pieces so that's that that is an example of a good lead generation type post now you're in a different industry, you're not targeting businesses, whatever it happens to be. Um, okay, you modify it, whatever, whatever you need to do. Here's another one. Now, some people say that um, all uh, good lead generation posts have to be kind of long. Uh, not always, right? So I, a couple of years ago, I did this um, Facebook Live, okay? And it got aborted for, for whatever reason. And um, so what I thought, the heck with that, I'm going to go straight onto Facebook now and type up a piece of text, right? And I got uh, 24 comments, of which at least, no, let's say half of them are leads, okay? So that's 12 leads just from, uh, what is it, two or three sentences. Ah, oh, well, my live got aborted, but I hope you got value from it anyway. If you want the one-hour training video, seven content archetypes, plus two, say something below and anything will do. Right, so the way I look at it is that people are going to ask for a video like that. They're, they're marketers and they're keen and they're wanting to learn about this sort of stuff. Right, so that's that's definitely one of the sort of um, the type of leads that I like to generate. And um, then we we have a, a little follow up procedure and then we sift and sort and um, we get some we get some good uh, quality people out of that. So this one was much simpler. Just leverage a previous post, keep it to a paragraph and uh, offer and uh, call to action. So there you go. Now, here's another one. Uh, this one worked extremely well. And um, I can't remember how many, um, how many comments I got but, or how many leads I got from it. It's well above 150 from a single post. And it leads with the problem, see? Opens with the problem. If you love cold pitching, spamming groups, and spraying links on your personal page, this post isn't for you. On the other hand, if you have 
a hunger to attract uh, qualified or quality people and who are keen to talk to you, read on, you're going to love it. Okay, so on the left-hand side there, we open with a problem, we give quick belief, more problems, process insight, offer and CTA, call to action. All right. Is Okay, this is uh, the first post that I ran in March. Oh, sorry, uh, last month. So it's, it's a pinned post. I've, it's still pinned there. You, you've probably seen it. You, if not, you can have a look at it. Um, now, how many? Uh, 126 comments. Uh, there's a few more than that there now, but it's a pinned post, so I get a few uh, trickles. So what, what did I do with this one? I opened with an insight. So I did it a little bit different with this one. I opened with an insight. Uh, then I featured a problem, gave some quick relief, then a bit more uh, of an insight, process insight, and then the offer and the CTA. I always have the offer and the CTA. This is if it's just a lead gen post. Not all of my posts are there to generate leads. They're just there to make people think. Right? I don't want to be sort of hitting people with, with um, pitches for... Um, you know, my free offer or something like that. Okay. All right. Now, uh, direct outreach. I mentioned, I said I'd mentioned a little bit about this. And well, basically, here's what I do on LinkedIn for those of you interested in LinkedIn. Um, I use Boolean, Boolean search method to find people. I can search uh, geographically, I, I can narrow it down, I can do all sorts of things like that, uh, different industries, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, different occupations. Um, then what I do, I send a connection request with a note, just a very simple note. It seems to, um, the note that, the words that I use seem to uh, work quite well, certainly better than what I was using in the past. So it helps to increase the odds of them accepting the connection request. Now, after exception, uh, after, I don't review uh, profiles much, not anymore. Uh, the same with Facebook. I just go, I just, okay, if I'm in Facebook, I'm in a Facebook group, I just have a quick look at their photo. I don't review their profile. I just go click, 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 click. That's it. I'll sort them out later. The, the people who accept my friend request, I'll sort them out later. And then I'll decide whether I'm going to talk to them or not. But, um, and the same with uh, LinkedIn. I, I just have a quick look at the summary uh, of, their, of their, their profile summary. And if it looks okay and it's, you know, it's sort of niche congruent for me, I'll uh, send the connection request with the note. And I have a little tool that sends an automated uh, note message, right? Now, after acceptance, I, then I check their news feed and I'll have a better look at their profile and, and um, I will um, see how active they are. And if they're active, I'll send a direct message. Right? But if they're not active and there's quite a lot of people on LinkedIn who are not active, I'll send them an email. And um, at least half of the clients that I got um, last year from LinkedIn, just using the simple method, I wasn't relying on content, uh, because my, I didn't have enough engagement uh, on LinkedIn at that time. But um, if, they, if they weren't active on LinkedIn, after they accepted my connection request, I would send them an email instead. And at least half of the clients uh, from last year came from that method. I send them an email. I don't send them a connection request. Uh, well, sometimes I did send them. Uh, well, look, even if they are, do seem to be reasonably active on uh, LinkedIn, I send them the DM and they still don't, re they don't reply, I'll, I'll still send an email. So, um, yeah, that's basically how I handle it. And uh, if they reply to my email, um, okay, well, then I'll follow up. I'll, I'll send them a piece of valuable free information, free report, something like that. And then, you know, it's the old thing, wanting a conversation to open up. Um, okay, example of uh, an email format. This is one where I... I have something in common. If you know somebody, you know, you know, you've got something in common with them. I say something like this. I saw you at the Connect Collab workshop again recently. I hope you're getting value from it. I picked up my first client from uh, Connect Collaborative recently. I like it. This is to an accountant, right? I like your website. It seems the messaging is very much a reflection of you. So it's very customized, this email that I send out. Once I've connect, accepted my connection request, that said, I've listed a few things that I think would give it more oomph and impact because I'm a marketer. So I look at websites all day long. Um, I know how to pull them apart. I, I, I can dissect their messaging and find the problems, et cetera. So, um, so that, that guy um, said, yes, please. Yes, please. Please send it over. He replied very, very quickly. So the method there is you lead with something in common, uh, give a compliment, Highlight problems, make an offer CTA. Keep in mind that on LinkedIn with this messaging and email thing that I do, I only send five, six, occasionally 10 connection requests a day. That's all. 
I don't use software to do, to do the sending. I do it one at a time. I don't want to send hundreds uh, because now with all the restrictions from LinkedIn, uh, it makes it impossible to do that anyway. So I'd, that's the way I do it. Now, email short form. Uh, emails don't have to be long form. They can be short form. And here's an example. I led with something in common. Uh, so it was good to, hi, John, it's good to connect on LinkedIn recently. Long shot, this is to an accountant. Um, I wrote a report called Accountants, How to Attract Your Perfect Client Without Being Salesy. Because accountants are terrified of sales. That's why they go into accountancy, right? If, they, if they're comfortable with sales, they'd, be, they'd become entrepreneurs. They wouldn't set up a little accounting practice, would they? Um, so I say, I thought it might be of interest. Would you like to check it out? Just reply to this email I'll send it to you. Surprising how many people reply. Now, uh, finally, uh, this will wrap it up now, five minutes. Before I uh, continue, uh, I'll, if you've got, if you want to hang around, uh, I'll hang around and answer a few questions. If not, we'll, we'll finish in five minutes. But I just want to share this little thing that I've got uh, going. And um, I hope, um, whoever, whether you're watching the live or, or the replay, you sort of like the idea. Options, all right? Now, there are different ways you can use to quickly bring yourself up to speed so you can move forward fast. But before I share, let me tell you about an option that will not produce quick results for most people. Trying to figure it all out yourself, particularly when it's online. It's sort of an alien area for a lot of people. If this method worked, why are so many people still failing? Sometimes I call it the muddle along method. Why do they do it? Well, maybe they're not sure who can help them or they want to save money in inverted commas or uh, maybe they're like the person who wants to save money from going to the dentist even though he's in a lot of pain. Well, I, I don't know. I, when I'm in pain, I need to see a dentist. I want to go and see the dentist. I think most people are like that. But when it comes to building a business, making profit, they're not in any physical pain. Um, and, you know, they can put it off for another six months. They don't have to do it unless they've got a burning desire to do it. So this, anyway, look, this attitude has never made sense to me. So the first thing I'm suggesting is that you should do is face and accept these realities if it's an issue for you. I don't want to be patronising in any way. But um, if you want to move on to the fast track, you'll need to sort out your content and messaging issues once and for all. It's not about pretty websites. It's not about, you know, pretty header images and all the rest of it. No, it helps a little bit, a very small bit, okay? But it's really about the content. That's the missing ingredient for most people. So, and... When it comes to content, you'll need help from someone who's been down the path before you, but, but not, uh, not just on the content. I'm talking about messaging as a more uh, holistic topic, right? So talking to someone on Messenger, for instance, it's not a post, it's, but it's still about writing, isn't it? So there's lots of people, uh, there, well, there's plenty of people. I mean, I've done courses with copywriters and people like that. But it doesn't mean they're great at making sales on uh, social media platforms because the missing link for them is often how to conduct conversations on, let's say, Facebook Messenger, okay? So when I'm talking content, I mean messaging in total. One way to get help is to buy a course or two, but you'll still have to figure a lot of it out yourself. Actually, uh, in 2019, I took a sabbatical, largely. Um, so um, I wanted to do more study. So I, uh, I bought five courses ranging in price from $500 up to $2,500 in price. And um, most of them, honestly, I didn't get that much out of them um, because they didn't offer much support and I couldn't get them to sort of help me with customization and personalization and all the rest of it. Um, and the funny thing is that the cheapest course that I bought was $500. And... Um, I got the best, that was the best value for me. So it doesn't all, always go that, you know, a two and a half thousand dollar course is going to be necessarily the best course. Just give you that little heads up. Now, another way is with private coaching. It's good. It's terrific. I've had my best results with, uh, with uh, people that I've worked with on a kind of a three months, four months uh, basis, intensive uh, private coaching, but it's expensive and a lot of people can't afford it. That's just the reality. Um, now, here's a guy that availed himself of uh, some uh, private coaching support from me. This is a guy called uh, Peter Beckenham, 
he has become, and I didn't need to work with him for three months. He was pretty well sorted out within four or five weeks. It was quick. He's a very fast learner, and he's built a big tribe on uh, Facebook and also on LinkedIn. Okay? So um, lots of stories like that. Another option is group coaching. It can work well, but you may not uh, get help with customization. I have a friend who um, paid $24,000 for some highfalutin group coaching program out of the US. My friend is based in Melbourne, and um, he, Melbourne, Australia. And um, you know what his results were after, was it after three months? Zero. Big fat zero. It, terrible. So, um, you know, that money was basically lost. Um, I know another lady, I'm actually in her group. She, her group coaching program is 15 grand. She may give you a, a scholarship if you ask her nicely, and that'll bring it down to 10,000. Guess what? No personal support. You just go to the trainings, blah, blah, blah. No personal support, no customization, nothing like that. Finally, we have a combination of all three. So we've got course elements, so that's training elements. Uh, that's, in other words, uh, recorded elements, right? Um, plus uh, group coaching, clinics, and private coaching, an element of private coaching. Now, it's not the same as a full-blown private coaching situation, but, you know, it, it does include, and I do know a few who were like that. There's a guy in England that I'm, I'm reasonably friendly with, and he does this at Combo, right? So he, he's got, like, a course that people can access 24-7. Um, he does some group coaching, and he gives them a little bit of private support as well, Okay. Problem is, he charges seven and a half thousand now. It started out at five and a half, now it's seven and a half thousand dollars. So I've got something called the Connect and Convert Mastermind. It's the second series. I ran one last year, and um, it works pretty well. When I say, and it does include private coaching, right? So it includes everything that my friend in England does, uh, but he's at seven and a half thousand. When I say I include private coaching, it's on a limited basis, um, but. It's not a full-blown uh, private coaching program, but that combined with the group coaching, the interactive coaching, the live clinics, and and everything is recorded anyway, uh, the hotline, all that sort of stuff, um, it's pretty good value. And uh, personal help will be available to, to you during the six-week period. And so that brings me to the money. Uh, as I said, I've seen overblown group coaching programs sell for 15000 and more, no private coaching included. My Connect and Convert program is still in beta. So I ran it as a beta thing. It wasn't perfect. It was a bit rough around the edges, but the content was great. Now I've upgraded. I've got um, new strategies, uh, new ways of doing things, um, building on what happened last year. So I'm saying it's still in beta stage. And because of that, I'm dropping the price. The price is not 7500 It's $1,097. But... I've got this early bird, and um, you can you can pick it up for um, you can get involved for two hundred and twenty dollars, and then just pay one hundred and twenty five a month, or you pay it all, all up front. You save a little bit, and it's four ninety seven. So it includes a heck of a lot. You have access to the group coaching sessions, the live clinics, the recorded library, the template pack. Yeah, you get templates, right? Templates of uh, content that you should be able to modify for yourself. So you don't always have to be writing content yourself from scratch, okay? Okay, so you get all of that for a paltry sum, a small sum, and um, that's it. I'm not going to ask you to buy anything today. I'm just saying if you want to check it out some more, um, just ask for the link and uh, to the description page, and I'll, um, I'll send it to you. All right, so despite all those interruptions, uh, let's see. We're only 15 minutes over time, so not bad. Um, all right, any questions? Are we worn out? I know Shirley, it's starting to get late for Shirley, so um, are there any questions um, about anything, uh, really, anything that I've covered tonight? If I miss something, ask it. I'll, I'll answer it to the best of my ability. Kim, I have no questions, but I want to thank you. This was, this was great.